Hey everybody, welcome back. Hope everyone's getting ready for this weekend. And geez, it is like, I don't know, 10 degrees in New York City. I'm wearing this hat because I'm cold in my apartment. Um, I'm trying to get cozy and I wanted to bring y'all along for the climb. I think usually my approach for new seasons is I try to get to Mythic as fast as possible and then make videos. But honestly, I wanted to talk through this deck. I wanted to talk through my process, why I'm playing it. Um, I've mentioned it here on the channel before. I have a video on playing top 20 Mythic with... Uh, I think it's only off by one new card for this build, um, but I really wanted to just play a deck, explain why, and hopefully this will help for anyone who's interested in on the climb themselves. Um, so if you didn't see my patch video, uh, basically it feels like aggro has gotten some helpful buffs. It feels like Teferi has been, you know, reined in a little bit that life gain has been nerfed a little bit um that chandra which i learned from logan the other night uh does five damage to you now instead of four um a lot of things have shifted and i will be bringing a video on yan lang i promise um but i know right now people are still testing things i've been talking to other folks in the community and i just want to get to mythic i think with some of the decks i know very well um, and then maybe do a little bit more testing and a little bit more refining. So, without further ado, I want to just get into uh, this Dahmer build. Um, and I think there are plenty of other ways to build this deck, but I really... I have always felt that the Gaius Cradle version, um, if you haven't played with this card, it is very unique, and I don't think any Planeswalkers besides maybe Vivian would run something like this and even then i just don't think it's that good for them but it's specifically good in a deck that is trying to get to eight mana um that is really trying to close the door or close out the game that way and obviously domri can generate a lot of creatures because of the colors that we're playing but also the passive right you've got a boar that uh comes out and you can make more of them so that's just the you know you have the ability by turn seven to usually have at least like three bodies on the board you can also plan for it um another tip is if you're playing worms wake right you can prep it the turn before which would be turn six it'll come into play uh at the beginning of basically your upkeep right before your land goes off and then your land would count worms wake so you can guarantee at minimum seven mana on turn seven but you're almost always going to be adding more than that the reason I think Guy's Cradle is the best card for this deck, with this sort of construction where you are, you know, you're ending the game with Crater of Behemoth or Lava Wave. Um, the the reason Guy's Cradle is good is because you already have cards that are ramping you throughout the game. It's likely, honestly, that by five or six, turn five or six, depending on your draw, depending on if you're on the draw with the fring, fragile mana gem that you can play an 8-drop on turn 5 or 6. And then, basically, Guy's Cradle allows you to do it again on turn 7, right? So it's it's not just that you're having to deal with one, like, very powerful 8-cost card. It's very easy for Domri in this build to set up two turns like that. And that's usually more than enough to close the door on most decks. Um, I definitely want to hop into the gameplay. I'm going to go over some of the key cards... Um, and then if we really want a deep dive video in the future, I'm happy to do that. But I just wanted to have the list for y'all for you to, you know, work on it and, and explain some of the changes. But I think your main will we'll go by cost, I think. So you, you've got your kind of aggro package with Sun Dancer and with Channeler of Might. Um, they can really be pretty potent threats early on in the game. Sun Dancer, if you draw it on turn two or turn three is still good. And that's pretty nice for a one drop. Channeler of Might being one of the best, I, I think is the best aggro one drop where you're playing a one mana 3-3 three, three, um, as long as you have a five power creature, and we'll talk about that. And Birds of Paradise is just an all-star. I've had other teammates, you know, play with different versions. I really think Birds of Paradise 
is a very underrated card in a lot of builds. And what it really allows you to do is to buffer your life total by having a free blocker, right? And when you add that mana gem, it just accelerates what Domri is able to do when you're playing the werewolf build. And I really do think these werewolves are worth it. Um, in our two drop slot, we've got Treetop Lookout, which got buffed from a 3-2 to a 3-3. This card is already very good. It's just really good in a trap meta. Um, if you're playing into Teferi, if you're playing into Liliana, other green decks, right, where you can snipe their Worm's Wake, um, some of the trap turns are extremely telegraphed, right? Like, they're potentially not playing anything. And then you play your Treetop Lookout, which can't be countered because there's no card that just straight up counters a two drop. You're in the clear. So the, you know, the main reason you run this is on turn whatever, you have 10 mana, right? Because you've got Guy's Cradle, you're going to Treetop Lookout, and then you just slam either of your eight drops. They can't do anything about it, right? Um, Colonian Tusker, just always a really good stat stick. Grudge Match, still just a really efficient removal spell in the deck, and often you can get, you know, kill something, your card lives, and you, you keep on plugging away. Um, this card, Gatstaff Agitators, is probably the crux of why this deck works the way it does. Um, really, <laughs> really, uh, I don't know, unexciting card when you first look at it. 3-1 for 3, pretty bad rate. Right, we literally just talked about a one a one mana card that's a three three. Uh, get a fragile mana gem, and it's moonlight. It flips into a five one. Okay, not really a better rate because one toughness doesn't really allow it to do much, um, but it gives you an additional fragile mana gem. So, you know, the play pattern with this is if you start on the draw, and you play this on turn three, you've got your fragile mana gem from when you started the game. It gives you the second one. Then you get a free flip, right? And then you get the third one. And what this can allow you to do is have seven mana on turn four and then eight mana on turn five. So it really just accelerates what you're doing. Hermit of the Flock, let me tell you, if aggro is running around, this is a really good card to address it because it's a one four for three that makes a one one body. And if you flip it, it becomes a four four, you gain two life. This card has always been to me one of the reasons that aggro might struggle because it's such an efficient creature to gum up the ground, to gain life that you might not have had before. And also they have to deal with a 4-4. Four -four. So it's and it's also accelerating your Domri passive where it's counting two creatures to get closer and closer to your war bores. Worm's Wake, just a really efficient body, right? It's always gonna be telegraphed so your opponent can play around it, of course. But um, sometimes it's also just really great to have a guaranteed creature to add to Gaia's Cradle when you're fighting for board presence. Gruel Club, I still like. I think some of my teammates have moved off of it, but it just tends to be really efficient. You're playing it, and you're just getting, you know, you basically pay three mana to fight a creature, and then you pay zero mana to fight a creature this, the next turn. Um, so I think... That's the way I would I would approach it. It's like it's a little bit more costly than, you know, a grudge match, and it doesn't pump your creature, but you can kind of throw your war boars, you know, at other creatures, right, and make them a little bit more useful. Or in the late game, you can make this, you know, potentially allow you to have like a really beneficial attack because you've got two charges on it. Um, so I I I have really liked one of of the Gruel War Club, uh, General. El, Ad El Admiry, oh my goodness, my cat is going nuts, um, is just uh, still a really good four drop, right? It's got five power to power your Channeler of Mites. Also, if it gets to attack, even once, you're getting a lot of value because usually, like, you have creatures in your hand. It also makes a 2-2 for you, right? Um, so it, it doesn't really replace itself, but it's you're basically getting half of a card out of just attacking, plus buffing other creatures in your hand. And I would say, if this card ever attacks your opponent twice, you, you should not lose that game. Um, now, if you don't have this, um, a quick aside, I would just play the 5-5 five, five boar for 4. Um, it kind of operates in the same space that this card does. Um, it's synergistic with some of the fight spells. And honestly, it might be better in some matchups. I just have tended to play general because it's still just a, inherently a more powerful card, um, I think. Or its fail case is a lot better. In, in some in some ways 
uh, Daybreak Ranger, what you're able to do with this card is set up a really easy turn where you play it on four mana, right? And you've got two or three fragile mana gems. You just paid four mana to instantly kill their best creature on the board. Just a really, really great card. Ulrich, this card has always been really good. This thing just allows you to, you know, at worst, trade for a creature and get a, a Moonlight creature. Sometimes you draw a Daybreak Ranger from this thing and you're like, wow, that's so insane. And best case scenario, which isn't that hard to set up, um, you just get to play it with five mana gems and then two fragile mana gems. It survives combat. You flip it, you buff your entire team. Right, and you have like one ones from the sheep tokens. You've got three twos from the boar tokens. Like the, you're getting a lot of value off of Ulrich if you're able to flip it, um, and it also just becomes a threat. You know, gaining trample and gaining one power. Inferno Titan is one of the new cards I'm testing. Right, uh, I don't know that this is the best option. I still have not drawn this in a single game that I've played yet. Um, but the thinking is 7-7 seven, seven worth of stats is really hard to deal with, right? It also lives through things like Flame Wave, um, or sorry, Lava Wave. So the thinking was might be good in the mirror, um, and also it allow it can fight over, you know, like it's got enough toughness to fight over another creature and still attack. And, and although the three random damage is a bit clunky, it's a bit unreliable, um, in some situations, it might actually allow you to close a game out when you normally couldn't, right? So I, I want to try it and see if it's any good. And then if it is good, I might trim like Centaur Sage, um, which is a little worse, definitely, in an aggro format. And Inferno Titan coming down and having the chance of blanking one of their, their creatures that they're beating you down with might be better. So I think it's worth looking into. I actually need to get some more materials to craft the new one because I never opened these. Um, Centaur Sage, I would say the most common play pattern. You are going to be trying to play this when you have 7 or 8 mana. And the reason why is you almost always want to play it and get instant value. Um, and it's really synergistic, obviously, with cards like Hermit of the Flock, right? Because it's giving you two draws because it's two bodies. Um, Centaur Sage, good in mid-range, uh, good in sort of a control meta. Um, but, you know, might need to shift depending on what we're, what we're looking at. And then Lava Wave and Crater Hoof. Don't have to say much here. This is how you close out the game. Um, I did used to have the Overrun, but I think Overrun, although it can sometimes get you a win when Lava Wave or Crater Hoof couldn't, I think Lava Wave, especially into an aggro meta, and same with Crater Hoof into a Teferi meta, um, Lava Wave can get negated, sure, but against aggro decks, it's always going to resolve. And uh, Crater Hoof is harder to counter with Teferi um, because all, all you can do is absorb it, right? And you can play Treetop Lookout, you can do different things, whereas if you split your win conditions between Lava Wave and Overrun, my cat is so amped right now, um, you're, get, you're opening up yourself to relying on cards that could get negated. So I do kind of, I think I like this split more, but again, we're still testing things out, and I think let's just get into some games. I had two warm-up games <laughs> just to get myself... Uh, back in the saddle, um, we're 2-0, and we actually played against Angrath before, and we went to 8 life and stabilized. Um, so we'll see how this goes. I think Angrath is a really good contender to move up in the tier list. I thought he was probably the best aggro option pre-patch, um, and I think he might be one of the better ones post-patch. And I was hoping we would see Hermit of the Flock in our hand, because this thing is what allows us to, you know, to beat them out, you know, to slow them down. Um, I'm going to send back the Titan. I don't mind keeping the, the Ranger. Um, okay. Well, <laughs> we drew another one. Um, Ranger is a little slow against this deck, but, um, honestly, you have to think about the fact that you've got four eight drops in your list. You've got three six drops, right? And honestly, having an average, like, four drop is not bad. Um, they didn't play anything here. Now... They could run out the dog next turn that, that could have haste. So I think we do have to play Tusker here, although it really hurts me because I really want to keep the Fragile Mana Gem for our, um, our werewolves. So I think I think I am, I am going to take the chance. Um, sucks that we don't have a one drop. 
So if we get hit for three here, haste, or four, it's not great on a haste creature. Okay, that's fine. Doesn't have haste. Yes, it's bigger, but it's not the end of the world. And keeping this fragile mana gem, I'm telling you, even when you're taking some risk with it, it's usually going to be worth it, because it just allows your hand to curve out so much better with your werewolves. Alright, what are they doing? Oh, short cutter. Okay. I was going to say, what are they playing prior to combat? That's that's a good one. Okay, yep. Very good curve for our opponent. But I think we're going to be able to slow it down a bit. Um, yeah, I definitely don't want to offer the trade here. With the uh, shipwrecker. Definitely want to be able to draw, or block the detonator. If they have removal for Tusker, we're probably going to have to chump block the detonator with our sheep, and then maybe block something else. Okay. Um, I don't know what traps this deck could be running. I, I don't think it's likely that they are running something, so I want to see if this block goes through. Okay. It did. I figured it might. I do not want to block here, um, because I do want to gain life, and I do... Oh, it's tough, actually. We could block and block, take two. Good grudge match here, next turn. We're going to take this damage either way. This is very tough. I think I'll block here. My thinking is... I might want to grudge match something, I might not. Okay. But I also might want to flip. And I would I would rather, you know, gain the life. So, but I, I think we're gonna have to change our tactics here and just try and stabilize as early as possible. So um we've got club. We've got club, we've got treetop lookout. Also got ranger. I think I prefer to kill Counterfeiter. So I think we need to do that. And this doesn't have a good block. Which is unfortunate. But we'll probably just use it to jump block. Ugh, Crags on this turn is pretty rough. But yeah, this is what Angrath could do. I mean... The combination of sneak creatures and making other creatures not block, it definitely makes it tougher for us to, uh, to stabilize. Okay. I will probably use... Alright, let's see. So we have to take the four. That's pretty obvious. Um, I'd rather get this off the board, most likely. And blocking this doesn't really matter. Well... It's the same it's the same damage so I guess block here block here we take four five six seven eight nine ten yeah we probably lose <laughs> it's a very good curve I mean if ember spawn crags doesn't go off that turn we have a better shot but yeah no it's pretty much guaranteed yep so I think I will just concede here yeah well, that's how you can win with Angrath. Getting the Emberlings on turn uh, turn five. Really hard to deal with. And they were applying enough pressure that we didn't get to flip our Shepherd, um, which definitely does slow things down a bit. Um, and we also didn't have a one drop. So I think all the conditions came together for our opponent to really, really pressure us. But I do think Domri has a pretty good shot in that matchup if you've got Shepherds, if you've got one drops. Um, I, I quite frankly I just haven't played against Angrath all that much. So it's it might be true that I need to mulligan anything that's not basically a one, two, or three drop. So probably keeping the Daybreak Ranger in our opening hand was not the way to go. Um, Alright. Chase. Okay. Interesting. I wonder if this is Lab Jace? Hard to know. Um, okay. 
I mean, Sundancer is a good way to pressure Treetop running it out on turn two. We've got Grudge Match. That's all good. Um, yeah, I mean, this is fine. It's a fine hand. Really, it's going to come down to curving out, trying to pressure, um, and then, you know, making sure we can slam one of our higher cost creatures, right? We drew the Crater Huff. I don't think I've ever played this matchup, so this should be interesting. Okay, with Zinterspool, I have to imagine this is a laboratory deck. Um, so we don't we don't really have a great turn here. Uh, I'm just gonna run out the treetop. Maybe we have an advantageous block that way. Maybe next turn, we'll either we could grudge match and flip this potentially. See what we draw. Okay, block is good. Sure, I will block here. It allows us to attack through next turn. I would probably be fine with trading. Okay, apprentice. Okay. Alright, oh, we've got three mana. Um, I don't really care about this attacking again. Just play our hermit. And pass the turn. If they want to attack with Apprentice, which I don't think they should, I will definitely snap block. And the same here. Okay. Um, I don't know what trap they could have, but I guess I'm more invested in getting this off the board. If they are playing the build that I think they are. So, okay. That's fine. I'll block here, obviously. So we still don't have good attacks next turn, but... Okay, Sylvan Shrine. Hmm. hmm, interesting build. I guess we'll we will find out. Um, I think it's a just slam. This guy. I don't think there's really you know the general. I don't I think there's a huge reason to play Colonian and like Grudge Match. Okay, got the War Boar. We'll keep it in hand, obviously, because we'd love to pump it if we get the attack off. Um, they attack with Apprentice, we'll, I think just take it, I don't think there's really any reason to block. Daybreak Ranger, okay, well, I was not expecting that. That's a great answer to the general. Alright, and they have two mana open, which definitely could be remand. So that is not what we like to see. Um... Command, I think, is is it two or more, or is it three or more? I'm actually not sure. So I guess... Okay. They don't have it, so that's good to know. And I think our most efficient turn is just going to be playing these out and double flipping. We're on eight mana, so obviously if they tap out, we can go for Crater Hoof. Um, but if not, probably just trying to play out Daybreak Ranger. And Armonicon. Okay. I guess that's that's decent with Predator. Or like Daybreak Ranger if they have another one. I wonder what the end game is here. It's definitely an interesting build of Jace that I have not seen. Hmm. Okay, divination. So they're probably going to be able to ultimate soon. They've put up a, in a, a really good de defense, so I think we're not super favored. Okay, repulse, that's fine. I think leaving themselves open to Crater Hoof here is pretty weird, or Lava Wave. Um, so there's not much to debate here, in my opinion. Um... I could trade off the 7-3, but I don't really want to do that. I'm trying to think, like... I, don't, I mean, I guess besides the card that... makes it so... Um, 
it bounces all creatures to hand? I mean, like, I, I'm not sure what they, how they answer the board, necessarily. And we're going to play out the board, because it's a 5-4 now for one mana, and we've got Gaia's Cradle next turn. So, I'm going to have more bodies. So they could ultimate this turn. I mean, that, that seems decent. Or... Dungeon Ghost. Okay. Still any for as long as this remains in the arena. Okay. So we, we've got Grudge Match to answer that on our turn if we're able to. Oh, okay. Panoramica on that. Okay. That makes sense. It's kind of a cool interaction. So only negate counters this. So I think we'll we'll fish a little bit here, maybe with a three drop and see if they, you know, if it's a remand. Well, I guess it's not a huge drawback if we just throw out negate now. I think I want to do this, because I don't really want to reduce the toughness of the other creatures. Sweet. Alright, so the rest block is block, block, and then they take 10. I think that's fine. I mean, we're just going to refill the board. I'm guessing they just have remand up. So we will uh, play around that. Um, so I think we just run out of meek. Yep, it's gonna get remanded. Since run out of meek. Just running out the team here. I'm still worried about them, like, somehow answering some of our creatures, but obviously I don't really know what this build is, is kind of an end game is, so I'm just going to play, keep applying pressure as much as I can. Okay, unsummon, sure. Repulse, cut. Yeah, that's good, because it takes off the buff when it's bounced to my hand. And crap. And anticipate for one. Okay. Um, all right. Well, no reason to throw away our, our wolf here. Yep, makes sense. It's a five. And I think just to make sure that I'm applying as much pressure as possible, I'm going to run out um, Centaur Sage. And I guess just... Well, if I want to flip this, I can run out the boar so we draw. Okay, Lava Wave is good. Yeah. We could have added two bodies to the board, but I kind of wanted this to be able to attack past a three toughness creature. Okay, so they're gonna use Panharmonica on that. Okay. What? Alright. Yeah, I have to imagine they're running Lab Maniac. And they're just gonna try and stun us to slow us down. Weapon Rack. Oh, that's from the <laughs> Tolarian Academy. I was like, hold up. <laughs> well, I don't think you could be playing that card in your deck. That's sweet. Already we've played like two matchups. I cannot remember the last time I played against his Dom Ring, so. So if they're playing green, they could be playing a uh, worm. That's pretty good. 
The Strovin's good, yep. All are gonna slow me down. Ranger for one, yeah. Whew. Okay. And I don't think we're gonna play Lava Wave here because if they have Remand, it's like pretty brutal. Um, I like I like birds as just a chump blocker for a turn, and also netting us a mana. So I guess let's. Where do we run out Hermit and Daybreak Ranger? So if we run out Hermit, then we can't flip the Ranger. But also, like, our man's going to disrupt that either way. Hmm. This is tough. So if I run out Protector, we get a 5. This bumps us up. Okay. Okay, they, they do not have that. So the plan here is to maybe try and close out through Lava Wave, potentially, but... So they haven't had the Remand both times. I mean, they've got to have it soon. Or they, they had it the once, right? I think. God, it was like turns ago. Yeah, they had the one Remand. see what they do. I mean, it makes sense to just attack, stun my best creature, I'll chump block with birds. I'm, I'll be willing to trade with my pack hunter. Okay, figment. Arcanus. Okay. And we're going to debut that. That makes sense. Panharmonic on this. Okay. Well, I think we have to play Lava Wave. <laughs> I don't think we have a single option. I'm pretty sure we just lose. If we can't, they already have a relevant card in their hand. So, uh, definitely just block here. And I think we hope they don't have it. So we're going to have 11. So we actually can throw out the Hermit first to check. That's pretty huge. Um, yeah, so I guess we do that first. Or we could actually throw out Ranger. No. Okay, they do not have it. And that should be lethal. Block here, take seven. Hey, we got there. All right, I'm going to say not my cleanest game. I was definitely trying to figure out what our opponent was, like, doing. Um... Which, like, sometimes you just you just got to play through the motions and hope it works out, especially when you're not sure what your opponent's doing. But, like, they're, they, they weren't really able to, like, take our creatures off the board, right? They'd bounce them for a turn. We'd redeploy them. Guy's Cradle's just giving us, like, four, three or four free mana every turn. Um, and eventually we're going to get an 8-drop through. Ooh, cool. Okay. I have not played against the Yenling. I have not played with the Yenling. So I'm a little bit behind this week, so I'm glad we're going to get this matchup. And Rooftop Lab. Interesting. Okay. One, two, three. Love to see it. Love to see it. And I'm telling you, this Gatstaff Agitators is, is the glue for this deck. Um, in my opinion, if you run this version. I know other people run Emberling. 
or like the the one that draws a, a creature from your deck. Um, but I just think this one tends to be more powerful, at least in this kind of meta. So start with our uh, Sun Dancer, and then we'll see what we're looking at. We we'll maybe run out the Tusker, and then see if we can set up an early flip with Birds of Paradise. This card does so much work in this deck, it's crazy. Okay, Delver. I mean, I like this kind of list. Um, that's that's kind of what I was thinking of doing. Um, all right, so what's more impactful? Would I rather play Birds and Flip and then play Gatstaff Flip? Probably. I think that makes a little bit more sense. Then playing out just Tusker to Gatstaff. I'll take the two. I don't think I want to use... Like, Birds of Paradise essentially says get a free block in this game. Um, we don't really want to use up our free block just yet, is, is kind of how I'm thinking. Alright, let's get our attack first. I know some of these decks run Disorient, which, which is kind of interesting. Um, play Agitators here. Get the flip. So if we draw Daybreak off the top of our deck, right, we're just getting on turn four to kill something. So it's literally a four drop that kills something and flips into a five four reach. Cards is super good in that way. Huh. Divine Smite is not a bad draw here. Um, I think I do want to start trading, so I'll trade off here and take the three. Like, you definitely want to take creatures off the board if you're going to see something else. And that was cool. That was a cool graphic for their passive. I like that. Alright. Um, we don't want to use our mana gems, remember, because they're fragile and we do want to have outs to drawing, like, strong cards here. So I think we're just going to play out pretty much everything else in our hand. Maybe aside from birds, and I could hold centaur and birds up. Um, yeah. So they got to draw an extra card. Um, they hopefully won't be able to draw an extra card this turn, because we got blockers for the Faithful Steed. But we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, I'll take two. Oh, that's the... I was like, what is that sound? It's like the the feathers lighting up for the factor. Sweet, little foggy. Love this guy. Honestly, one of my favorite reasons for playing this deck. This card is just, like, was absolute garbage before. Oh, and balance. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's... I, I really like this build. I think that's a pretty smart thing to do. Um, all right. Well, we've got, got ability to attack here, obviously. Um, if I'm them, I'm probably trying not to block so, so much, right? Because you just want more bodies to be able to attack. Um, do like Centaur, but we actually don't have a way to play, like, another creature. So I think... Hmm. But also we get to keep a Fragile Mana Gem. Yeah, it's probably worth resolving this, actually. Plus a huge creature. Alright, so this turn I'm more tempted to block because then it denies the uh, the card draw. Especially if they play Aura of Courage, um, which would be so good for them right now. Then all of their stuff becomes 3-3-4-4s. Three, three, four, we get like one good block and then we're going to have to throw away uh, at least one other creature. Not feeling great about this game, but obviously Lava Wave does a ton of work if we draw it. So we'll see. Yep, there's the Aura of Courage. Yep. Definitely a solid attack. Alright, well, we are going to block um, because we do not want to get give them uh, you know, free cards. And blocking here is like, okay. <coughs> we take four. They don't get to draw an extra card, which is good. Um, okay, Mana Constructor. 
I think this right here is interesting. This card is definitely annoying. Um, but this is whew, that's a really good draw right now. Um, so when they attack with Foggy, we're pressured to block. And I, but I could Daybreak Ranger this and and block here. I think that's a little bit more efficient. Um, yeah. Grudge Match. Grudge Match is interesting. I still think this is the most efficient line. And I will play Birds of Paradise because it's essentially free. Draws us another card. And then we're going to flip. Depending on what they play, I may just trade here. But I could. All, I, I think it's probably best to just jump block if I need to. I like Constrictor. I, I think that it makes sense with this deck. Dungeon Geist, yep, I, I would be playing that too. Okay, well, that gives us, gives us a clear <laughs> motivation to block here. And hopefully we get to just trade and trade, which is definitely good for us. Keep our Centaur on the board to just keep recruiting card advantage. So, honestly, now I'm feeling pretty good about this game. We're on Cradle now at 10 mana, so also if we're drawing a drop, we can play it. Ooh, well, Inferno Titan is not a bad one. Um, yeah, I think we just run this out first, see what happens. Nice. <laughs> Good target to hit. <laughs> Alrighty. Um... And we definitely want to just attack through, so I think this is a pretty easy... I'm actually going to go Warbor, and I am going to use some of my Fragile Mana Gems here and use Club, because then it gives me a free fight next turn. Oh! I totally forgot about that card. Okay. Well, I am going to offer them the trade here, actually. Because I want to pressure the opponent, and... yeah. Oh. Not even... Okay. Yeah, I bet they were, like, really banking on Rooftop going off this turn to give them maybe enough. But... Also, I mean, Inferno Titan coming in and killing their guys is pretty good. I mean, in that sort of scenario, I'd much rather have Inferno Titan than Centaur Sage, but Centaur Sage allowed us to... I wouldn't say, like, stabilized, but it blocked a creature and then drew us, like, I don't know, three cards, right? Or two cards. So, definitely better than the range meta. Yeah, that makes sense. I think this is a pretty bad matchup for them. I mean, the fact that we already have reach creatures in our deck, we have fight abilities, and most of our creatures are going to be bigger than theirs, even with Paragon of Balance. So, um... Yeah, we'll start off with the loss, but then rattle off a couple wins here. That feels good. Um, yeah, I think I definitely could have played the Angrath matchup a little bit better. I think I, sh I think I do need to mulligan a little bit harder um, in the beginning because I can't be really greedy about it. But yeah, I mean, I really, f I've always felt like this deck is really strong into aggro. It just has so many tools to slow them down, to have bigger creatures than them. And to just basically outlast them. Um, but also, I just think the deck is good into Teferi. Well, I shouldn't say good. I should say, when you've played the matchup as much as I have, I feel like it's it's pretty winnable. Um, I used to think it was really hard. But also with the Teferi nerfs and just playing Treetop Village, you know, at the right moments. Which is basically not before <laughs> you want to try and play your 8-drops. Um, as long as you're making smart trades and trying to outclass their creatures and get card advantage and flip your, you know, get mana advantage, flip your uh, werewolves, I, I think the matchup's, like, f totally fine. And I think against other aggro or other control decks, like the Jace, right, like, that build couldn't really answer what we are doing. I'm sure they were looking for something, right? I'm not sure what it was, right, in terms of a sweeper or in terms of delaying the game. But, like, the deck will still just apply pressure when you curve out, right? You'll play Sun, you'll play Sundancer or Channel Overmite. 
you'll play like Tusker as a follow-up or Agitators or Worm's Wake. Um, then you get into your four drop slots, which are maybe trading to kill something, right? Or accelerating your um, your ability to win with like Ulrich or Inferno Titan or Cent uh, Centaur Sage. And then you've just got your closers with Lava Wave and Crater Hoof. Um, this deck is straightforward. You do need to be paying attention. I think I said this on my last Omri video, turn five, six, and seven, right? But particularly five and six, because those are the turns leading up to Guy's Cradle. So you need to really be managing your mana. And like I said, aside from game one, where, you know, at some point we had to use our fragile mana gem, like, save your fragile mana gems. If there's ever a trade-off where you're like, okay, they're not really pressuring me, but I want to pressure them, so I'm going to use my mana gem, I would not. Unless you have to use your fragile mana gem with this list, do not. Because you're going to get so much more value out of having two fragile mana gems to slam your daybreak ranger on turn four right and have it go off slam ulrich on turn five have it go off um have the flexibility to play inferno titan lava wave or crater hoof behemoth on turn five or six um you you can combo worms wake right where you go hermit's fox turn three worms wake plus sundancer turn four you've got a ton of power that you get to work with after that so you do have to sequence the deck properly but once you get the sequencing down, once you know what your opponent's strategies are for interacting with you, I think the deck becomes really resilient because you can kind of set the pace of the game. And once you understand how they're responding to you, you do have enough interaction with your opponent to really outplay them um, and really give yourself a shot at winning kind of any game. Liliana is the exception. Liliana... I can, I can go 5-0 against Liliana one day, and then I can go 0-5 the next. It really just depends on how they draw, kind of how we draw. But basically, if they have a clunky draw, we should win the game. If they just drop one of their big zombies on turn 3 or 4, we should not win that game. There's basically no condition aside from like us having a pretty lucky streak to come back from that. So that's your worst matchup. Take it or leave it. But um, I think in this aggro meta, I would just play Domri. I would just run over those, you know, stabilize against those aggro decks, run over them. And I would just pressure those control decks that are trying to maybe answer some of those aggressive or mid-range options. So I hope this was helpful. Uh, maybe we'll do a little bit more of the climb later. But we went from basically 1,600-ish um, to 1,700, so that feels good. And uh, maybe even next time I'll see you, we might be at Mythic, but... I'm hoping to share a little bit more of this uh, climbing journey with you all. So thanks for sticking with it. Please like and subscribe. Please comment. Let me know how things are going. And uh, we'll catch you next time.